D. Dykstra here with another video for calculus. We've got finding the upper and lower sum from a region using a summation notation and i and n and n plus 1 and 2 n plus so all these different n values. So again, in my previous video, I did something about finding the lower sum. And the lower sum, again, was small s or lowercase s of n is equal to the sum from i to n. The change in x times the function of m, lowercase m sub i. These are inscribed triangles, typically. They're inside or under the curve. And in most cases, these are left-sided rectangles uh, where the change in x is b minus a over n on an interval a to b. Uh, where A is your lower X value, your B is your upper X value, your upper bound, lower bound, upper bound. N is your number of rectangles. And then we have little m sub i that's going into the function will be A plus your change in X times I minus 1. If we're looking for an upper sum, again, sum of I to N, I equals 1 to N, of the change in X, uh, times the function of capital M sub i. So now we have capital S of n, meaning an upper, uppercase, lowercase, right? These are circumscribed rectangles, or they're above, right? So these are not under the curve. They're over and above the curve. In most cases, these are right-sided rectangles. There are some situations where they're not. And capital M sub i is a plus the change in x times i. All right, well, we looked at an example before of just simple y equals x squared. And now here we are to go through it with the upper sum. So again, your change in x is 2 minus 0, or 2 over n, over n, 2 over n. And then your uh, m sub i, and my notation is off because I just drew it, which is capital m sub i is 0 because that's our a value, right? That's our a value plus 2 over n, our change in x, times i. Well, here's our sum from n, i equals 1 to n. Our change in x was 2 over n times, in the function now, I've got 2 over n times i. And then we're going to square it because that's what our, our function says, x squared. So now. 2 over n is our change in x. I'm going to drop out the summation symbol for just for space and time. I mean, there's a lot of space, but just for time. Uh, 2n uh, times 4i squared over n squared. So all I did was square every inside piece. And then we are left with 2 over n times 4n uh, over uh, squared. And now what I'm doing is I just move the i squared out of there because I'm going to do something different with that. I'll multiply these two together. All three of these are being multiplied together. So we get 8 over n cubed. And then here's i squared, if you recall. This is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. All right. What do we do with that? Well, we distribute. n times n plus 1 is n squared plus n times 2n plus 1 is 2n cubed plus n squared plus 2n squared plus n. Then simplify that. Well, n squared plus 2n squared is 3n squared divided by 6. Again, 8n cubed. If I distribute this 8n cubed into here and there, and there, recalling that there's a 6 there, there's a 6 there. So we could write these all individually if we wanted to. I could simply go, oh, well, there's a 6, and then there's a 6, and then these all had a common denominator of 6. So now I could individually work these together. And what you'd find is that n cubed with that n cubed will cancel. We get 8 over uh, 3 because 2 changes from 2 to 6 to 3. So then 8 times. 3 is 24. 24 divided by 6 is 4 divided by n. n cubed uh, d divided into n squared will just give us 1n. 8 divided by 6 is 4 thirds. 
n divided by n cubed is just a lower uh, n squared in the denominator. So there's, that's really what we're after right there. That is, the, that is the answer. That is the sum. We don't know what n is. So if we did, we could plug that in and figure out what that sum was. But we don't. So what we could do is say that if we had n, this is where the limit definition comes into play, if we decided to take the limit as n went to infinity, it would take that n in the denominator here, and it would become so increasingly large that it would diminish the value of 4, and so we would say that goes off to 0. Same thing here. This 4 is now div being divided by 3n squared. Well, 3 times n squared, that number is going to increase dramatically, and so 4 divided by 10 is 4 tenths. But four one hundredths, four one thousandths, four one hundredth. You can see these numbers are getting very, very small. They're all approaching zero. So that will go off to zero. So then our true estimation with the limit definition of this function is eight thirds. Eight thirds is our total sum. All right? Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks again. That was the upper sum of this function. Glad you hung out. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you very soon. Thanks a lot. Peace and love. Math is awesome. Keep it mathy. Bye.